Hi guys. I am here to do you guys a Bible study tonight. Just uh, my headaches back out. My headache and dizziness and nausea is back. I just took a migraine tablet and a nausea pill. I'm hoping it kicks in. Um, I didn't want to have to take another migraine shot tonight because I've only got so many. But it's only on this side of my head, from my forehead all the way to my temple and into my eye. It's annoying. And this cool rag feels really good on my face. But anyways, guys, I am here with your Bible study. <clears throat> See the ring I made? Tonight I got on. It says God in the center. And it's tie-dyed. I did it in purples and blues and tills for the tie-dyed. It's adjustable. Just made out of one of the little stones. Um. Okay, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um. Our thought throughout tonight will be our discomfort with this world can lead us to help others in the name of Christ. And as always, we'll start off by reading a Bible verse, which tonight is John chapter 17, verse 16. Jesus prayed, Those whom you gave me are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Which is Jesus saying that he, Jesus knows his home is in heaven, that he's only on earth for a temporary time. And that's what he wants us to uh, comprehend as well. <laughs> Funny videos. Uh, somebody had a pig, a big pig probably like 200 pounds in their house as their pet underneath a blanket and it was eating a cookie. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just caught that glimpse all of a sudden. I thought, what the heck? Is there a pig laying under a blanket on the couch eating a cookie? <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's just Jesus saying he wants us to understand that we're only in, on this earth temporarily. This is just our temporary home and that if we accept him into our hearts and our lives and do his will that our home is with him in heaven as well our home will be with him in paradise so we're going to go to our bibles and read you can um, follow me in yours or you can follow in mine but i'll be reading from the king james version and we'll be going to hebrews tonight which is in the new testament in the back of your book um, and we'll be going to chapter 11 first. We're going to go to two, two different chapters. First, we're going to chapter 11, verses 1 through verse 3. King James. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Verses 1 through verse 3 of chapter 11 is... Now faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. And now we are going to go, which do appear. Now we are going to go to chapter 13. Sixteen. I don't know if that's one. Hang on. Let me see if there is a thirteen. Verse sixteen. Because it's confusing. It don't say whether it wants us to 
read, then read verses 13 to 16 or go to chapter 13 and read verse 16. It looks like it says go to chapter 13 and read verse 16, so that's what I'm going to do. So chapter 13 of Hebrews verse 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Yeah. I would say that's probably what they wanted us to read here. Because if not, I will go ahead and read, uh, I'll go ahead and read, um, chapter 11, verse 6. Verse 13 through 16, just in case that's what they meant, because I'm not really sure. <clears throat> and that says, chapter 11, verses 13 through 16 says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I think that's what it was more wanting us to read there than chapter 13. So as you, cause as you can see there at the top, it's like read Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, then 13, 16. And I don't say, you know, I wasn't sure which one to read, but I think it was wanting us to read it all out of the chapter 11 so that because that made more sense with the um, study tonight so the story that goes along with our Bible study tonight is the language food social customs and national circumstances in 1966, Vietnam, were strange to me. I was serving as a nurse volunteer in the small Christian hospital. We did what we could for our patients, civilians suffering in the midst of war with the simple medical tools we had. Patients died of conditions easily treatable in my home country. I felt overwhelmed and depressed. Months later, I realized that I had been suffering from culture shock, feelings of ruthlessness and instability that may result from sudden overwhelming change. Returning home to the U.S., I discovered a different type of culture shock. I missed the quiet dignity and courage of the Vietnamese people, their respect for age and wisdom, their generosity and hospitality, the close ties of family and community, the simple and unshakable faith in Jesus Christ that my Christian friends there had lived by. Followers of Jesus Christ will always live in culture shock. After all, we are strangers and foreigners on the earth because, as you know, heaven is our true home. We will often, perhaps always, feel uncomfortable and out of place, for we desire a better country, a heavenly one. Like I said, this is only our temporary home. Like, like Carrie Underwood's song is, I love that song. Like Carrie Underwood's song says, this is just your temporary home, it's not where you belong. Just windows and rooms that we're passing through. This is just a stop on the way to where we're going. I'm not afraid because I know 
This was my temporary home. I can't sing, but that's, you know, it's, I love that song. That's what Jesus was telling us in the verse at the beginning, John seventeen sixteen. that uh, this is just our temporary home. You've only got so long to do what you're here to do and to try to do what's right and do the work, God's work while you're here so you can make it to your paradise. You can make it to your true home, which is in heaven with your father and your brother Jesus and what a wonderful wonderful family reunion that will be can you just even imagine oh. you can just hear the angels singing now can you imagine how beautiful just imagine the most beautiful choir you've ever ever heard in your life sing and you thought oh this is so beautiful heaven's choir of angels is going to be so much more thousands and thousands more times more beautiful my friend was telling me of Our, it it was her cousin, but um, I don't remember if she was telling me or her mom told me. But it was her mom's niece, and it was her cousin. Anyway, we went to school with her. She was in our class, and she was our friend. And she had just she just died this year, with um, due to cancer. And when she was dying, her dad was a pastor. Her dad's a pastor. And he was sitting there with her holding her hand and um it's just really sad because it's so sad because she's got a young daughter she just got a she just had a baby you know like she always wanted and it, i don't even think she was a year old yet so she left behind a young daughter but her time her time had come and she asked her dad when she was laying there, you know, getting ready to cross over into her heavenly home. She said, Dad, do you hear it? Do you hear that music? So beautiful. Do you see the lights, Dad? Of course, he couldn't see or hear anything, but she could. She knew it was there. She could see the lights and she could hear, hear them, hear the beautiful sounds beautiful as she's ever heard before and he, he was holding her hand he said when she left out of this world and entered into the next it's amazing it's, I don't know how you can get through that with your child but I'm glad that he got to experience that with her. And I'm glad I got to share that with you guys so you'll see that I think telling telling things like that that people experience when they're dying help help bring some people that don't believe to God because they're like, wow, maybe this really is real. Maybe there is really something to this. Maybe I should rethink how I think about life. And instead of just saying Jesus is not real, maybe I should think about this a little more. There's this um, video on YouTube, guys. I forget what her name is, but she's a, she's been a nurse for a, I don't a good number of years. She's retired now. I think she worked for hospice. She's a hospice nurse, and she went on and on on this YouTube video telling stories of stuff that happened, what patients had seen and said, 
when they were dying. I like cried through the whole video. It was so amazing. I'm going to look for it tonight and I will share it with you guys on my Facebook page and um, Twitter and everything. So you guys should really watch it. It's a really good video. Especially if you're one of the atheists that don't believe. You should at least give that video at least listen to that video before you wholeheartedly accept that Jesus is not real or that Jesus is not meant for you please just take time to listen to that video that's all I ask just watch that video through that's all I ask you to do and then sit down and think and look into your heart and see then what you truly believe. I could go on and on telling you stories of people I know that what's happened to them when they were dying and <laughs> everything they said came true just as they said it did. Just like they said they seen them what was going to happen before they was going to go it happened just like they said you would not believe it. <laughs> But I know it's true because it's been people in my own family. So one day it'll happen to somebody in your family or happen to you. And I hope that you see those beautiful lights and hear that beautiful music. I hope to know that you are going to heaven and not spend an eternity in darkness. With that being said, let's end tonight with our nightly prayer. God of all nations, disturb us from our earthly comfort. Help us to serve others with love, even as we seek your heavenly home. And Brother Jesus and Father, please bring the people who are lost to you. Let them look into their hearts and just look into their hearts and think about think about the things that you do and the stuff that people say about you and let them see the videos and listen to people when they're telling them and things they're telling them and not just take it as it's not true it's just a some story somebody made up let them look into their hearts and and finally know the truth that they will accept you into their lives before it's too late. And I pray that they can then bring others to you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. So that was our Bible study for tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. As for me, I'm going to go look for that video. And then I've got a few things to get done, then I think I'm just going to chill out and hope this headache and dizziness and nausea goes away. So hopefully I will, God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading and a vlog. And maybe I'll get another Bible study video up as well for you guys. So until then, let's bring those souls to Jesus, guys. And God willing, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys. God bless.